Let's find some options. Swing trades. Hello, traders. It is Wednesday evening, July 8th. It's after hours. Time for the weekly swing trading video. Let's start off by taking a look at our current open positions, which we don't have many of, and see how they're currently faring. If I go into the staged order entry screen, what I did was I took a snapshot before I added today's trades to it so that we could have a little clearer picture of what's going on. We are currently short 1 BILI June excuse me, July 17th, 35 put. We sold that for better than 40 cents a few weeks ago. The stock had actually dropped the morning after we had this trade out there. And you can see that it's currently trading at 7 cents. I think we're probably able to short it for at least 50 or 60 cents. The same is true for BZUN. There were also short the July 17th, 35 puts at better than 70 cents. That stock also dropped initially on the open. We're only about a week out from expiration right now. Both of these stocks have really rallied. You can see that there's a 10 cent offer currently on Bizon, and you can see that there's a 7 cent offer on these puts. So they're doing what we expected. This was just an outright naked put sale. These are working out well. My premise was that Chinese stocks should fare better than domestic stocks because their economy has been open too much long two months longer than ours has been and as we take a look at some of the Chinese stocks that certainly has been true we've got one that we're going to try and do a trade on tonight you can also see this trade right here this is our Walmart bullish put spread that we sold and you can see that those are the July 2nd 117 puts that we were short and we bought the 116 puts that was not a 14 cent credit, but an 18 cent credit. In any event, that expired worthless. We made probably about a 20% return on that approximately. That was a nice trade. So that was a winner. CHWY. We are short the July 10, 46 puts, and we're long the July 10, $45 puts. And we did that spread for a 20 cent credit, and that spread is currently two cents bid offered at 10 cents. So definitely going our way. We do have a couple more days until expiration on this one and looks really, really good. In fact, I like this trade. We are going to try and do another spread on CHWY and see if we can get filled on that. If I continue down the list, you'll see that we tried to sell a Texas Instruments July 10 put spread. Nothing done. Couldn't get that trade off. The market moved a little bit higher on Thursday after the video, and the stock did as well. No chance for us to get filled. In all these cases, I'm trying to get better than what we had the night before in terms of a fill. So I'm waiting for a market pullback. I'm waiting for a pullback in the stock. I want to be putting these spreads on during a pullback as opposed to trying to chase the market higher. So, nothing done on Texas Instruments, nothing done on IBM, nothing done on BIDU, nothing done on CRWD. I don't want to go back and look at all these stocks. They've moved higher. End of story. Couldn't get anything done on those last week, so we're going to cancel all those orders. In fact, my instructions last week were for any spreads that expired on July 10th. We are only going to try and enter those trades on Thursday and Friday, actually just Thursday last week because Friday was a holiday. And so those were canceled Thursday after the close. And then these two trades right here, we've also canceled tonight. So got nothing done on those. We've got kind of a clean slate, although we did get filled on a Walmart July 17th. So a week from this Friday, those will expire. We sold the 117 puts and we bought the 116 puts. Really nice trade. We got a 20 cent credit for that. Let's take a look at Walmart. Let's start off with that and then we can kind of move on. You can see that Walmart had this massive spike up yesterday. So this spread is looking really, really good. And we are short down here at the 117 strike price. You can see that we have Horizontal resistance, now support. So there's one line of defense, the 100-day moving average, two lines of defense, 200-day moving average, three lines of defense, major horizontal support at 
four lines of defense on that trade. So I think the probability of success on this one is very, very high. So we only got one trade done, but that'll be a 25% winner for us. So in this market that's really gone sideways, I think that's exactly where we want to be. We want to keep our risk exposure light. We want to try and get some of these spreads done on our terms. If we get filled, great. If we don't, we move on. So here's what I see happening in the market currently. We've got this major technical support level forming at the 200-day moving average. That's approximately SPY 300. We tested it once here, but it was multiple tests. One, two, three. We rally off of it, come back down, multiple tests, one, two, three, four times, and then we start to rally off of it. There's a downward sloping trend line right here that has been breached to the upside on that initial breach. We rallied up, but now we've been flatlining. So market hasn't been going anywhere. We have the coronavirus spreading. There were 60,000 new cases yesterday. That is the peak in the U.S., so that is keeping a lid on the rally. It's also going to mean that we're going to have a longer recovery than we had hoped for. Also means that we're probably going to see additional stimulus from the government. Right now, Republicans and Democrats are hashing that out. Republicans want to stick to the one-time payment of $1,200 per taxpayer, where the Democrats want the PPP extended so that the additional $600 per week in unemployment benefits is extended, perhaps through September. Something's going to have to give. That PPP was actually extended last week. It was supposed to expire in June, and now it's been extended until August 8th. We're going to be using about $660 billion of that stimulus and there will only be $120 billion left. So they are going to have to do something fairly soon. Today we got news that the Fed may not continue to buy corporate bonds. That weighed on the market a little bit, but it recovered. So you can expect the Fed to be very, very accommodative, especially since the virus looks like it's going to prolong the economic recovery. So I see both... Uh, stimulus on the government and stimulus by the Fed, Fed in the way of quantitative easing as being very bullish influences. We've got earnings seasons going to start next week, and that's typically initiated by bank earnings announcements. So we're going to have lots of banks posting numbers. I think that the banks are going to be a little bit on the soft side because the economic recovery has been very, very sluggish. We're going to see a lot of write downs, bad debt write downs. I also feel that given the zero interest rate environment that they're going to have a tough time making money. So I don't think you're going to see the market rally off of those bank earnings announcements, but fear not because right behind that we're going to get the mega cap tech earnings and that includes Netflix and Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, these tech giants comprise about 20% of the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 now is very, very exposed to a handful of stocks. They have actually benefited from the coronavirus. They've been able to work from home. They haven't had any kind of supply issues, supply chain disruptions. You've had more people ordering online in the case of Amazon, in the case of Facebook and Google, you've had lots of people on their social media platforms. You've also had them interacting via the internet. So in those cases, the earnings have actually been quite good. And I think the market is looking forward to those earnings announcements. So we're going to get that upward bias, that upward influence into earnings season. And so I think that preserves the bid. So you got the coronavirus kind of keeping a lid on the action, and you've got mega cap tech earnings keeping a floor underneath the market. That means that we will probably have a slightly upward bias, but I'm not looking for a runaway market. If the market does get up to this 324 level, we can expect to see some very stiff resistance. I think we've got about a four, five, maybe six week window of opportunity to sell out of the money bullish put spreads. And then I think toward the back half of August, we start to see some market selling. Well, why would I think that? When you start getting into the late summer months, people start taking time off to get their vacation time in before the kids go back to school. That takes a lot of volume out of the market. 
You also have Washington, D.C. in recess. So investors get nervous. There's no one there to mind the shop. You're probably going to see coronavirus continuing to increase without anybody at the helm. So I think investors are going to get nervous. I also feel that as we get further into late August, early September, the elections are going to start weighing on the market. Right now, in the polls, Joe Biden clearly leads, and I think that investors are going to get nervous because he's already stated that he's going to repeal a lot of the tax cuts that President Trump has initiated. The market will not like that. A lot can change in three months, so we need to stay flexible, but I do see some selling pressure coming in late August and into September, and this is typical. These are weak months for the market. And I think that the way that everything is playing out here and the timing for everything, I think that is going to actually come together. So we're going to try to get some spreads done. We're not going to force it. We may only get one or two of these spreads done this week, and that's okay. We're going to keep it light. I still consider this to be a very low probability trading environment. And you can see how the SPY hasn't gone anywhere, but... The QQQ has. And we're seeing some stocks. You can see another all-time high, all-time closing high today. The QQQ has been grinding higher. And a lot of these stocks, they are starting to go parabolic, which uh, suggests that money is flowing in there and that the trade is very, very crowded and that we could see some selling. I'm going to avoid any kind of stocks like that. What I want to see is I want to see relative strength. But I also want stocks that have not blown higher. They're just starting to break out. I think that there we have less risk exposure because there's not a lot of fluff to be taken out. And that's what we're going to try and do tonight. So let's take a look at some of the stocks that I have on deck tonight. And let's start our analysis. These are going to be the new trades for this week. So we're going to bring up the option chain here. And let me start off with Amgen. So let me just put up that chart. We'll do some analysis here and see why I like this particular pick. So on Amgen, you can see how we've got this horizontal resistance. One, two, three, four, five. Really nice defined horizontal resistance. And then we get this big breakout right here. If I draw my crosshair tool across a price level, you can see that that comes into play somewhere around the 244, 245 level on Amgen. That also happens to be the halfway point of this long green candle. So that is support, and we want that support to hold. After making a high here on heavy volume, you can see how the stock is drifting lower. It's a biotech company. It is fairly volatile, so it does move around. So if I take a look at where I would like to get a spread done on this, I'm really trying to key off of that 240 level right in there. I feel that that was also a small resistance level. That should be support, and it's still down on the lower end of that candle right there. If the stock easily comes through and breaks this horizontal resistance, which is now support, and pulls in sharply, then I think we need to watch this one and consider closing it down. But for right now, I'm going to assume that that price point is going to hold. So we're going to bring this option chain in. We're going to put up Amgen, and we're going to take a look at what the premiums are like. We're going to have to go out to the July 24th expiration cycle on this one. And I want to go down to that 240 put. And here you can see the red dotted line. That is a one standard deviation move. We're just inside of it. And I'm going to click on the 237.50 put. So to recap, Amgen, we're selling the July 24th expiration. We're selling the 240 puts. We're buying the 237.50 puts. And you can see that the market on that is a negative 37 cent bid offered at $1.40. Well, you already know that we're going to be looking for a 50 cent credit on this because we have two and a half points between the strike prices. And I always like to get a 50 cent credit on these. If this trade works out, we're making 50 cents, but we're having to put up $2 in margin. That is a 25% return in two weeks. So, by the way, 
We haven't had a losing trade since the middle of February. Just before the market crashed, we got into Disney and we bought that trade back the very same day. A couple of hours later, I did not like what I saw. That ended up being the top of the market and we avoided that big market sell-off. Since then, we have been nailing these bullish put spreads week after week after week, even during the huge market decline when we had lots of positions on. So we shifted from selling naked out of the money puts initially to bullish put spreads as the market started to find its footing and move higher. And CHWY, yeah, it went in the money on us. I did not close that trade down. Why? We'll cover that when we look at the CHWY trade in a few minutes. So Final recap, Amgen, we're doing this bullish put spread. We're looking for a 50 cent credit. That's going to be GTC. It's already in the staged order entry screen. So I'm going to move this aside and we're going to take a look at the next trade. BABA. I had mentioned to you that I like Chinese stocks. Here you can see a very significant long-term horizontal resistance level that comes into play around that 225 level right in there. We had a really nice big breakout. Little bid check yesterday. The market was very, very weak yesterday. It closed on its low. And so you can see how the halfway point of this long green candle was preserved. Today, the market was a little bit higher right out of the gate and this stock took off. So I don't want to chase this, but I'm assuming that it might pull back just a little bit. And if it does, we are going to try and come in and tuck right behind this support level here, which was the close yesterday, and leverage that 235 put. That's what we're going to be leaning on is that support right there. And we're also going to be leaning on the fact that we've got big volume and a breakout. So if you ask me tomorrow, hey, Pete, look at this chart. What do you think the stock's going to do? I'd have to tell you, I think it's going to move higher. So you might not be super comfortable with a support level here that is above this major support level. Ideally, we'd be right on that support level. But in this particular case, I like doing the trade because I think the stock continues to move higher. We may see a little bit of a pullback in this bar here, and then it might take a couple of days for it to make another new high. That would give us an opportunity to get filled on this trade. So let me put this option screen up, and we're going to enter Alibaba. And we're going to be going to the July 24th expiration. And we're going to go to that 235 put. And there we can see it right here. And we're going to click on the 232.50 put. So a couple of things to notice is you'll notice that there is a one standard deviation move here. That's the red line. And a two standard deviation move at the 237.50 level. So when you have the option chain up, it's nice because then you can see where these price levels come into place so that you can structure your bullish put spreads. So this spread looks like it is five cents bid offered at a dollar seven. Well, that is a very, very wide bid ask spread on it. We know that when there are two and a half points between the strike prices, we want to get a 50 cent credit. So we're going to be looking to sell a BABA, B-A-B-A, -A, bullish put spread expiring July 24th. So you'll have about two weeks and two days worth of exposure. We're looking to sell the 235 puts and we're looking to buy the 232.50 puts. And we want to do that for a credit of 50 cents. So let's take one last look at this stock. This is the key bar right here. Actually, this is the key bar for me because this was the breakout and it closed near its high on a big breakout like that and big volume. That tells me the stock wants to go. It was able to preserve half of that green bar right there. And that also happened to be the close yesterday. So that 236 level should hold. We're inside of that shorting the 235 strike price. I'm expecting this to hold. I think this is going to be a nice trade. Plus we've got those standard deviations, the one and two standard deviations that are going to work in our favor also. So BABA -B -A was the second trade. FDX, let's take a look at that one. I should also mention that as I'm doing this, I'm paying particular attention to what the earnings release dates are. That's critical when you're structuring these spreads. I've had a few questions come in. 
hey, Pete, you know, can I do a bullish put spread that spans the earnings announcement? And then as the stock moves higher into that earnings announcement, I can buy back that bullish put spread. Certainly you can do that, but you're going to need a good move in the underlying stock. The reason for that is that the option implied volatility stay very, very elevated because those options span the earnings announcement date. So ideally, we want to make sure that when we are selling premium, we are staying ahead of that earnings announcement date so that the options expire, we have a clean slate, and then the earnings announcement is a day or two or three later. That's how we like to play it. Now, take the flip side of that. When eventually we are buying premium and we will be buying puts and calls. Don't think that I never buy puts and calls. I do. But there's probably 15% of the time when market conditions are conducive to premium buying strategies. And that time is not now. But when we are buying options, I absolutely want to make sure that those options expire after the earnings announcement because they're going to retain their value very, very well. Now, I'm not going to hold the position over the earnings announcement. I will exit that position before the earnings announcement, but those options are going to hold up really, really well. They'll retain their value. So that's just a key point uh, for all of you to know. If I saw something really good that had an earnings announcement coming up and I knew that the buy into earnings search, which is right here, we'll take a quick look at that tonight, if I've got a really good candidate and I feel the stock is going to inch its way higher into earnings, I can buy an in-the-money option that spans that earnings announcement. I'm going to want to make sure that it's got a high delta so that if it just grind, grind, grinds higher, I'm not going to be exposed to any time decay, but I will be able to take advantage of that gradual move higher. So it's kind of a... I need to wait for the market conditions to be conducive for that, so I don't want to belabor that point. When the conditions are right, you can expect to hear more about that type of strategy. So FDX, we had this earnings announcement right here. You can see that by the A on this green bar. The stock had already tested the 100-day moving average. There's a breakout through horizontal resistance. Stock rallies, tests it once, tests it twice. That's how it works. That support holds. That's also the 100-day moving average. Earnings announcement here. Gap higher. Now you've got support right here on that candle, which comes into play around the 149 level. And that would be the first line of support. The second line of support would be this 200-day moving average. So if I see this breached, I'm going to assume that we're probably going to fill in the gap. If we fill in the gap, I want to see it have support before it even gets down here. The stock has been able to maintain this bid very well. FedEx said that the domestic packages, uh, package delivery has been robust and it has offset international weakness. So market like the news, stock rallied on it. We are going to try and sell a 140 bullish put spread. So let's get the option chain up here and I'm going to put FDX in here. So Federal Express, we're going to go out to the July 24th expiration. And the nice thing here is, again, we don't have to worry about earnings announcements because they've already announced earnings. And we really like that. So in this particular case, we're going to be selling the 140 put and we're going to be buying the 139 put. So there's a dollar between these two strike prices. And we can see that this is a uh, negative 15 cents bid offered at 54 cents. Because there's only $1 between the strike prices, we know that we want to get a 20 cent credit. We're going to try and make 20 cents. So we'll have to put 80 cents up in margin to do so. That gives us our 25% return on investment. And to recap this trade on FDX, we're going to be selling the July 24th expiration. We're going to be selling the 140 puts. We're going to be buying the 139 puts. And we're doing that for a 20 cent credit. So I like this trade. If we can get filled, I think it's going to be a good one. So let's continue to move on. Let's see what else we've got. I'm going to load you up. I'm going to try and do six bullish put spreads this week. Are we going to get filled on six? Heck no. But we may have a chance to get filled on at least a couple of them. And that'll be good because I think in each case, 
They represent good trades. AMD, trapped, going nowhere. You can see how it's been sideways and choppy. You can also see that the 100-day moving average is coming into play. We have a major technical support level here. One, two, three tests. Right down on that $49 price point, which is also inside of that 100-day moving average, which comes into play at around the $51 price. So on this particular one, we're going to be looking to get down to that $48 strike which is right there. And so you can see it's below that, below that, below that. I think that $48 strike price right there is going to give us plenty of safety. So bring in the option chain, put in AMD. Again, we're going out to the July 24th expiration, two weeks and two days. I want to make sure that we're staying within that time horizon. That gives us a lot of opportunities to reevaluate market conditions. And also, we can continue to roll positions. So, this week maybe I like FedEx. Next week it's another stock. The week after that it's another stock. I'm going to continually be looking for relative strength and the best opportunities. And staying within that two week time period allows us to do that. So, uh, we get maximum advantage out of accelerated time premium decay because those options really start to melt away quickly as long as we can get one or two days into the trade without any issues our probability of success starts going up dramatically after that so on amd we are going to be selling the july 24th 48 dollar puts and we're going to be buying the 47 dollar puts you can see that that spread is $0.09 cents bid offered at $0.19. Cents. Well, if I've got a dollar between the strike prices, I want $0.20. Cents. Can I get this tomorrow? No. Nope. Going to need a pullback in the stock. The stock actually in this case probably is going to have to come pretty close to that 100-day moving average. Probably going to need to see about a $2 drop. But look, the stock today, the low is $52. So... Yes, it's very possible we get a pullback like that in the stock. We have a chance of getting filled on this. That's the way that we want to approach these trades right now. We don't want to chase. We want to have orders waiting so that on these dips, we're able to enter the trade. As soon as the dip has run the course, the market resumes and floats a little bit higher. That's how we're playing it. So AMD, I like this trade. If we can get it done, I think that $48 strike price is safe. Ah, you're going to know this one. And here we've got CHWY, and I'm going to have to get into a little bit more of a lengthy conversation on this one because I do get a lot of questions on, hey, Pete, how do I manage these trades? So uh, you, you let it go in the money. I'm getting super, super freaked out here. Why did we get in the trade? Well, we got in the trade because this was a horizontal resistance level right at the $46 level. One, two, three, four. We had a breakout right here through that horizontal resistance. One, two checks. That was sufficient for me to want to get in. On any pullback here to this breakout at the $46 level, I felt that that support level was going to hold. But wait a minute here. We actually dropped below that $46 price point. In fact, we got down to $45. This spread was all the way in the money. What the heck? I thought you weren't supposed to let that happen. Well, you have to take a look at why the stock has pulled back. Is there something that's changed within the underlying stock? No, this was really market related. So I'm going to overlay the S&P 500. And you can see here that when we got into that trade right about in here, the market pulled back and the stock pulled back as well. And it tested that breakout right in there. Well, as the market recovered, you could see how the stock has also resumed its strength. That's why I did not close that spread down. So you have to look at what the market is doing. You have to look at why the stock is pulling back. In this case, again, it's because the market was pulling back. I didn't see any major breach in technical support on the market. Now, you can see that that SPY 300 level 
one test, two tests, it held. If the market had continued to pull back right in here and we broke that technical support, then I've got to worry about this trade. And what sets up is an opportunity for us to look at relative weakness and a technical breakdown in the market, which would suggest more market selling. If I have both of those factors, the character of the stock has changed, the character of the market has changed, then I have to adjust the position or exit it. And I also have an opportunity, if I'm a day trader, to leg out of the position. I'm not going to do that to most of you because you are swing traders. Many of you work during the day and you cannot watch the market and you do not have the ability to leg out. So I understand that. I appreciate it. If we do have to close the spread out ever, I'm going to send an email with instructions to close it down. So... And I hope to do that after the market closes. If it's something dramatic where we really need to get out, we need to get out right now. I'm going to send it intraday and hopefully you'll be able to react to that email. So all exits, I will send an email out to you. So watch for those. I'll also post bulletins right in Option Stalker. For those of you who are in the chat room, I'll also be posting it there. We haven't had any situation like that. Recently, yes, we have had to adjust, I think, three positions over the course of the last uh, two months or so. And I've been able to do all of those adjustments on an after-hours basis and leg out of those trades successfully. So that just gives you a little bit of flavor on CHWY. But I like the stock. It's been able to maintain this upward sloping trend line right in here. I'm going to take off the SPY. I'm going to put a GTC alert up. And I'm going to click on this low here, click on this low here. There you can see the upward sloping trend line. It's starting to come into play right around this $46 level. That will lend support to the stock. I like it. We've had earnings on it. I think this stock is going to continue to grind higher. It's not way ahead of itself. We already know that that $45 support level should hold. So we're going to take advantage of it. But we're going to try and distance ourselves on this one a little bit more, give us a little bit of extra breathing room. And the fact that the stock has not taken off dramatically will have the opportunity to do so. And I'm going to go down to the $44 strike price before we were at the $46 strike price. And we do still have that position on, so we're technically going to be doubled up. But with the stock currently at $50, I think that $46 strike price, which is $4 out of the money with two days left till expiration, is going to hold. So our probability of success on this one, very, very high right now for our existing bullish put spread that expires Friday. So can't quite say it's money in the bank, but it's pretty dang close. So we're going to sell the $44 put and we're going to buy the $43 put. To recap, CHWY, we're selling the July 24 expiration. We're selling the $44 put. We're buying the $43 put. And we don't have to worry about earnings because you can see the earnings were just released about a month ago. So in this particular case, with $1 between the strike prices, we're looking for a $0.20 cent credit on it. Selling the 44 puts, buying the 43 puts, July 24th expiration, C-H-W-Y. We're almost there. Only have one more left. So, let's take a look at the last one. M-O-M-O. -O. So, what do we got cooking here? Here we've got this very long-term downward sloping trend line that you can see come across right through here. Maybe I'll use the trend tool. And we'll click on that high right there. And we'll drag that baby down right through there. And now you can see a very well-defined downward sloping trend line. And you can see a big breakout above that downward sloping trend line and a close on the high. The next day the market is weak. The stock maintains half of that long green candle and it closes pretty close to that high from two days ago. Today, market up, stock continues to move higher. Chinese stock. You know I like Chinese stocks right here. We can also use the horizontal cross tool here, and we can see that there's horizontal support forming right there. Test, test. Now we're above that. 
the open from this long green candle was right at that level so that open is right around that $19 price point so is the trend line I like it and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at so I'm going to bring up MOMO and we're going to be looking at that $14 strike price Incidentally, when I'm doing these, I want to always make sure that I'm hovering over the E. That tells me when the next earnings release is. In this case, it's August 25th, a long time from now. So earnings are not a factor on this one. But with earnings season really cranking up, you must make sure that you know what the expected earnings announcement date is. Really nice feature within Option Stalker. And so we're going to go down to that $19 strike price. You can see that it's more than one standard deviation away and almost two standard deviations away. So MOMO, we're going to be selling the July 24th expiration. We want to sell the $19 puts. We want to buy the $18.50 puts. There's only 50 cents between the strike prices. And you can see that this spread is currently a negative 7 cents bid offered at 30 cents. Well, we want to do this trade for 10 cents. I've got 50 cents between the strike prices. I have to put up 40 cents for the margin requirement because I get to apply the credit I received. So 10 cents divided by 40 cents is a 25% return. Yes, you're going to be doing more contracts on this one because we don't have to put up as much margin per spread because we're really tight in here on the strike prices. That's the spread we want to try and do. We're going to try and leverage that horizontal support right there, that breakout above the downward sloping trend line, and that's also the opening price from this long green candle. I am expecting it to hold. So we may see a little bit of a pullback in MOMO. Well, we're going to need it to get filled on this spread, but we won't need much of one. So those are the trades that I like this week, and you're going to see all of those loaded within the staged order entry screen if you click on staged you'll see them there so this has a lot in it but you're going to see a number of stocks coming off so i will cancel all of those that we did not get filled on last week so it won't be as daunting when you take a look at it just look at the july 8th expiration those are the ones that i added today and all you need to do is click submit the order will be routed to the broker but it'll only be one contract, so make sure that you adjust your contracts with your broker so that you're not out there just doing one lot. So let's take a look at a couple of searches that we can run currently to take advantage of earnings season. My gosh, there's so many different ways for us to play earnings. And you know, we've got the strong after earnings uh, search. That's a really, really nice one. So if you are coming in after hours and you are taking a look at stocks this list is going to grow and grow and grow with each passing week because we'll have more and more earnings announcements behind us. You want to look for stocks that gapped up on the number and that have been able to retain that opening gap price level and that still have relative strength. That opening gap is going to be the strike price that you want to use to sell out of the money bullish put spreads. So the day that the earnings announcement comes out, some stocks react, some stocks don't. They don't really show their colors oftentimes for two days or so. And this search helps us go back and look for those stocks that have reported in the last two weeks. And it's, believe me, the search is a gem. So we can take a look at maybe a couple of them in here. ACN, I see that the stock is up. That's exactly the type of pattern that you're looking for. So you've got this gap right through that resistance level, comes back, it checks that breakout. I could have easily done a bullish put spread on ACN, and you can see how it's challenging that prior resistance level right there. See how easy? So easy. I could click through all these, but I don't want to spend time on it because I want to move on. Buy into earnings. Again, another really strong search that you can run. I'm going to click on option liquidity. That's a filter we can use. That'll narrow the prospects dramatically. But if you don't want to trade options and you're just looking for stocks that rally into earnings and you want to buy the underlying stock, you don't have to have option liquidity marked. Look at all these. You're going to find some great stocks that look like they want to continue to inch higher and you have a st statistically significant event coming up. What does that mean? 
we've gone through we've checked every one of these stocks once they're inside of that two-week window before earnings announcements they have a tendency to rally 75 percent of the time over the course of the last three years over the course of the last 12 quarters that is a really strong bias that is a huge edge for us i urge you to make sure that you're using the search and looking for those opportunities now I don't want to buy a stock that's gone parabolic expecting it to continue to run higher into earnings heck no i'd rather find a stock that has just started to climb higher so abbott is the first one on the list so let's use that as an example i come in now i know because it's on the buy into earnings search abbott looks good it likes to rally i come in i hover over the e and i go oh 716 it announces earnings next week Looky here, I got this nice downward sloping trend line. Oh, sweet. The stock has been able to get above that downward sloping trend line. I should have support in here. And I know that I've got the stock wanting to move higher into that earnings announcement. But I only have one expiration, which is July 10th. And I'd like to stay below this horizontal support right in here if I'm going to sell an out of the money bullish put spread if I come in right here I'm going to be right at the money could I do it if you're a day trader and you can watch it constantly fine then you can come in and try and sell a July 10 bullish put spread and the low was at 81 or excuse me 91.50 so maybe you use a 91 dollar strike price but you have got to monitor that trade constantly for the next two days. This is not something you can put on and just walk away from. That's why I'm not putting it in the weekly swing trading video. But that's a good trade. And that's the type of opportunity you should be looking for because the stock is going to have a tendency to hold that bid. So this is a great, great list. Have that 75% statistically significant event working in your favor and now you can see the stocks that are actually showing up so if i look at this and i go oh microsoft gee micro nah, no i don't want to be doing it on microsoft when it's already run that much netflix eh, no the train has left the station i don't want to be selling out of the money bullish put spreads i got a little bit of a dip maybe on that breakout right in there around the 470 strike okay then i can consider it so buy into earnings very very effective now there's one problem with the buy into earnings now these companies are announcing in two weeks or less that doesn't give me a lot of expirations to choose from so i may want to broaden that search a little bit especially when i'm looking for bullish put spreads well how do i do that well then i've got to go into the custom search engine and i have to bring the custom search up and in this case, I've already done that. So what do we got working here? Well, I have really good option liquidity. So I have that marked. And I've got an option liquidity better than one. 15 is the max. So nice liquid options. OK. Earnings date projected. July 27th. Well, why did I pick July 27th? Because I have two expirations before that july 27th date actually three expirations i have the july 10th expiration a week from friday and i've got the july 24th excuse me it's the 17th and the 24th ah, i had got it here let's go into the calendar here if i click on it it'll bring up the calendar so i have this friday is july 10th i'm obviously not going to be selling any bullish put spreads below you know with a Friday expiration unless I'm a day trader but I've got the 17th that I could use and I've got the 24th knowing that the stock is going to announce earnings on the 27th or later and I might as well go out as far as possible on this so I went out to September 4th picked that arbitrarily so now I know I've got two decent option expirations the 17th and the 24th when I can take a look at these stocks and try and sell some out of the money bullish put spreads ahead of the earnings announcement date now i don't know that these have that statistic working meaning a 75 percent chance of rallying into the number i don't have that working for me when i use these criteria but i can go in and i can mark trade signal bullish on a four-hour basis 
trade signal bullish on a daily basis and strength versus SPY relative strength on a four hour basis and a daily basis. And then I click scan and there's my list. These are all going to be pretty decent candidates. So if I spend five minutes clicking through these charts, looking for technical support and looking for that relative strength, I'm going to come up with some really good candidates. And by the way, you can see, huh, there's Alibaba. All right, that's good. Come down the list here. There are a number that I looked at. MOMO, that looks pretty good. And I think those are the only two that I have on there for this week. Well, there's the Walmart spread that we did last week, but there are a lot of good stocks actually in this list. I had to choose the best ones for this video. Those are some ways that you can use Option Stalker to find these trades. And once we get into the earnings announcement, if you're a day trader, this after earnings search bullish is fantastic right on the open. And the bearish counterpart is also fantastic. See what's ha having a good reaction to the number. See what's having a bad reaction to the number. On a good reaction is a breaking through horizontal resistance on big volume. Yes, great. That's probably going to be one that I want to trade out of the gate. Same thing on the bearish side. Gee, the stock is breaking major technical support. Very weak earnings reaction. On a five-minute chart, long red candles stacked one on top of the other. Okay, that's going to be a decent short. That stock wants to go lower. And you use this search. Try and use it as close to the open as possible. But you can always be looking at that search throughout the course of the day also. So that's all I've got for you, but I've got six really nice bullish put spreads that we're going to try and get done this week. If we get filled on a couple of them, I'd be very, very happy. We don't have any that are going to be expiring a week from Friday on July 10th, so I don't see the urgency to only keep these trades alive for Thursday and Friday this week. All six of these new trades we're going to keep live until the video next week, or I will be sending you an email saying, hey, I don't like what I just saw in the market. Cancel all the bullish put spreads. We're not going to try and enter them this week. You could see an email to that effect also. And I have been tending to try and find a swing trade, especially if we don't get filled on much of anything on Thursday or Friday. And it looks like we're going to be coming up dry. I have been posting videos on Sunday night. There also, we're trying to see if there's a swing trading opportunity available to us. I make sure and send out that email to you on Sunday nights as well, as long as there's a bullish put spread in there. So when I can post those videos after the market is closed, giving everybody an equal opportunity to try and get in that trade the next day, then I will add those trades to the staged order entry screen. But when I come up with swing trades in the chat room or I happen to mention them in a daily YouTube video, I'm not going to be posting them here because it's not fair to those of you who work during the day. I know that you want we want to have a level playing field. The other thing is look at this list. I've already spent so much time going through all these stocks right now, the ones that we had on, the ones that we tried to get on, the ones that we're trying to get on. It takes way too long for me to weed through another 10 uh, bullish put spreads or swing trades. So that's why I do mention them in the chat room and during the day in the videos, but I don't include them on that staged order entry screen. If you see them in that format, then you need to go in and place the trades yourself using the order entry screen. So again, that's all I've got for you tonight. If you're watching this video on YouTube, know that I release it to my members on Wednesday evening so that they have an opportunity to get in the trade Thursday and Friday. I post it to YouTube to the public on Saturday. So please go back, look at this analysis, look at what the stocks have done since I recorded that video on Wednesday night. In particular, if we get a market pullback, watch how well these stocks hold their bid, hold their own. Because we haven't had a losing trade since February. We're going to try and keep the streak going. We had a little bit of a tough time with CHWY, but that's looking really good right now. So we're keeping it going. We're keeping it going. Also, if you like the content of the video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that you never miss any of these videos. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night. We'll see you in the morning.
Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.